One of the things you can do to help ease your mind that everything's gonna go well the first time you start your engine is to prime the oiling system before you try and start the engine. Now, like a lot of people, I used assembly lube when I put the engine together, um, but unless you're gonna put the engine together with assembly lube and then immediately start it, there's not really a lot of benefit to doing that. It helps lubricate things as you're rotating the engine for assembly, but if you're gonna let it sit for any amount of time, uh, more than a few days, uh, that assembly lube, like any other lubricant, most of it is going to sort of wick out. Um, and so you'll lose a lot of the initial protection that you think that you're giving yourself by using the assembly lube. And so priming the engine does a, a couple things. Uh, one is that it uh, gets all the air out of the lubrication system. It pumps up the lifters, uh, it flows through the push rods and uh, lubricates, of course, all of the bearings, the cam and the main bearings. Um, and uh, it also gives you the opportunity to visually verify that the oiling system is working as it should. You can watch the top of the lifters and see if a little oil we weeps out. You can look at the rocker arms and see if the oil is coming up to the push rod and dripping over the top of the rocker arms and on top of the springs like it should. You can watch to see if it's flowing down through the passages back into the block on its return. You can see all of that and you can also check for leaks, uh, for instance, at some of the plugs. Um, so. The way that I prime my oil system, uh, again, I'm dealing with a small block Ford here, is through the use of this tool here. They make uh, all kinds of different manufacturers for these. Uh, focus. On one end, it has a hex drive. For a 289 or 302, that's a quarter inch hex. For a 351 Windsor, that's 5 16 And on the other end, it uh, just attaches to a drill. And then it's got an aluminum bushing that goes in the distributor hole just to keep this centered. And so uh, I've got one installed here. This is what it looks like. You just have to make sure that when you when you stab it down in there uh, that you actually engage the drive shaft for the oil pump. Uh, and then you can just use your uh, drill to rotate the shaft on the oil pump exactly as the cam shaft would by just rotating the distributor. Uh, just remember you've got to have the drill uh, in reverse in order for that to happen. The distributor rotates counterclockwise in its normal direction of rotation. And uh, if you haven't done this before you'll be surprised at just how little rotation it takes in order to create oil pressure. You do not need to put this thing on its top speed and, and pull the trigger all the way. Uh, as a matter of fact, you want to do quite the opposite. I've got it in a low speed and I rotate the drill very slowly. And uh, in doing so, it allows the oil pressure to build up slowly and to trickle slowly. If I did this at high speed, it can shoot out and splatter all over the place. Um, even doing it at low speed, you can uh, tell from my shot, from my garage floor, I've got some spots of oil on there. I'm using AFR uh, Renegade heads. Uh, AFR heads are known for having kind of a shallow uh, oil rail uh, where the valve cover sits. Um, and uh, I've got uh, clamped on here with my valve cover hold downs, um, a valve cover spacer to give me another half inch of depth um, and create sort of a well in there to hold the, the oil, uh, but it still overflows. Um, now what I'm looking for is for the oil to begin to drip down off of the rocker arms and you can see it's doing it a little bit already. I'm going to switch to the other side. I think the light might be a little better over here. And so as I look down across these rocker arms, I can see oil dripping from the rocker arm down over the top of the spring. And what that tells me is that the oil has been picked up by the oil pump, uh, moved into the passages in the block, uh, sent down the entire length of the block. Uh, it's gone through the camshaft, uh, cam, camshaft bearings and it's gone through the oil passages for the lifters themselves 
it's pumped up the lifters, it's flowed through the push rods, and it's coming out the top of the push rods into the rocker arms and dripping over the top of the springs. That's the complete path that it takes for the top end of the engine. Um, in the lifter valley, there is some oil puddled around all of the lifters. This is normal and this is what you should see. Uh, the uh, little bit of oil, a lot of oil goes up through the push rod. A little bit of oil weeps around the push rod and helps lubricate the top of uh, the lifter. Now, I like to do this with the intake off for a couple reasons. Um, I uh, want to be able to observe uh, the uh, oil flow around the lifters, but I also want to be able to look at this cap right here. Uh, this passage in the back of the block, um, there's one oil passage on this side of the block that runs front to rear, and from that oil passage, an oil channel comes up to just below this cap. There's an open chamber here, and then it goes down on the other side. And that is where the two lifter passages get their oil supply from. And so this plug, if you remove it, allows you to clean off those passages going either way. But uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Hopefully this will stay focused. Uh, there's fluid around that cap right here. So for whatever reason, probably um, this cap is probably not tapped in far enough, but I actually have oil leaking from around that cap. Now, by design, uh, Ford has made this fail safe in that the rail, rear rail for the intake manifold and the manifold itself sits right on top of this. And so there's no way this plug could actually come out in operation. However, the fact that there's oil leaking around that cap uh, indicates that that cap is not sealed properly and that would be oil pressure lost. Albeit only a little, I don't want any. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that plug, reseal it, reinstall it, and do this again. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I did my initial adjustment of the valves. Uh, I've converted this 289 to a roller cam. You can see uh, my retrofit spider in there, and these are uh, roller hydraulic roller lifters. Um, comp cams uh, says to set the rockers to zero lash and then half a turn. Now, I did that initially, but the lifters were empty when I did it. So now that I've flowed oil through and primed the oil system and the lifters are pumped up, I'm gonna go back through the sequence and I'm gonna adjust all the valves again. Uh, that way I know they're adjusted properly with the lifters pumped up as they should be. Um, and uh, so I'll do that. I'll replace this cap and get rid of that oil leak. Uh, and then I should be good to go. After that, I'll be able to put on the intake uh, manifold and I'll put the rocker or the valve covers on and move on from there. Um, the other and really important thing I think that you should keep in mind is that the oil is going to drain back down in the block as it should and it's going to happen pretty pretty quickly over the next couple hours or so. And so um, just because I've done this now and done it as part of this procedure to make sure that the oiling system works as it should uh, doesn't mean that I don't have to do it again. Um, when I go to actually start the engine for the first time, um, that's when I'm going to prime the oil system. So I uh, am in the process of building an engine run stand uh, well, I'm converting the, the stand that it's on now into a run stand, so I'll be able to fire up the engine in my driveway, uh, break it in, uh, and do all my adjustments and make sure everything's good to go before I ever have to put it in the car. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about the car part of it. That can be separate. I can deal with just the engine. Uh, but before I start it for that first time, I'm going to have to prime the oil system again, and I'll do it just before I start it. I'll pull the distributor. I will prime the oil system and I'll put the distributor back in and then I'll start the engine. And that way I know before I ever start the engine that I've got oil pressure and I've got good oil pressure. I don't happen to have a gauge 
on the block right now, so I don't know what the oil pressure uh, that I was generating was. Uh, that's not the point of this exercise right now. Uh, I will put an oil pressure gauge on it, of course, before I start it. Um, one thing to consider though on that note, since I don't have an oil pressure gauge installed, I had to put a plug in the block where the oil pressure gauge would connect, otherwise I'd just shoot oil out all over the place. Um, so that's uh, engine priming. Uh, you should do it if you haven't done it before. Uh, Chevy's work the, the same way. Uh, they just have a, a little cross tip. Um, you can actually do it with a screwdriver. You could stick a big screwdriver in there and just turn it uh, that way. Um, with a Ford, you don't need to buy the priming tool. You can use a quarter inch hex drive on your impact driver with an extension. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways to do it, but you should do it. You should prime your oil system, you should check it for leaks, you should make sure everything is working properly before you ever start the engine. That way you can remove that from the very large list of things that you have to be concerned with when you start the engine for the first time.